So we're going to be as interactive as possible, which is one of the keys to success with millennials. <laughs> so please feel free to engage, ask questions, dialogue um, during the process. So who are millennials? Anybody think they have an idea of what time frame millennials were born in? Dean Dark. 1980 to 1996, 99. Okay. So it's very fluid. That's, that's actually spot on. So the easy bite-sized piece of it would be 1980 to 2000. Now, with this, it can be fluid. So you might find some people who are on the cusp. Let's say you're born in 1979, and you have some of the traits of a millennial. You two are a millennial. Uh -huh. um, so we're going we're gonna to start off with some of the key characteristics of this pretty large group, and we will um, move forward from there. So I'm, I'm short, so I'm not going to stand behind here. But you also might find that your millennial students would appreciate your engagement. So how many of you feel like this class or this group of students you're dealing with, and let's say the past five to seven years, feels a little different from maybe even 10 years ago? OK, so we're going to talk a little bit more about, we talked about a cusp. Do you guys realize who's in the classroom right now? Some of them are, are not millennials. So we're, I don't want to scare you, but we're going to talk about who this new group is too. So when I said 2000 being the, the easy judgment of it, our freshmen were born in 1997. Okay. So millennials. Um, we're going to talk about four major characteristics of millennials and how to engage them in the classroom. So the first major characteristic of millennials is going to be their need for structure. Okay. So how many of you have heard students say, I mean, why did I get a point off for this? I mean, I think I should get a little bit more because I tried. <laughs> so we've all heard this, right? Um, you can't blame them. Sometimes you got to blame, your, blame the parents. And I know me, how many of you have, have children that are millennials? Okay, blame yourselves, blame yourselves. Um, but all, and all, all jokes aside, they have always lived a regimented life. Millennials have had schedules since they were two. They had play dates and they had this time. But when you were growing up, you probably didn't have that. You're, you, it was time to play, go outside, go explore. And millennials have had parents that were hardworking and had structure and oftentimes both parents had careers. So there was time for this and there was time for that. That affects how you become a student, okay? And especially a college student. This need for, reg, uh, for order is something that is innate in this group. So you have to give them exactly what it is you want them to know. And I know it's tough to swallow that you need to give them what they want, but if you want them to succeed, giving them extra or things that are outside of what you really want them to know, the core competencies. We've heard that, especially for the students that are, I, I know it's a nightmare. Um, it's tough to, to comprehend for those of us who had one plus two equals three to understand well, we can, let's negotiate this or let's, we can, I don't know, we can, let's just get the average or, um, so grades aren't abstract to them. So a lot of times we'll tell students, you're, you're okay, you're doing all right. Millennials need structure. They want to know their grades. So how many of you are using Blackboard? How many of you put your grades on Blackboard? Okay, so that's not everybody. And I know, that might not be the right method for you, but for them, they want to know where they are along the way. It's not theory to them. And most of us were okay, we did our assignments and you know, we kind of had an idea of where we were in the class standings, and that was enough. But again, when you're talking about a group of people who have always had regimen, they want to know where they are in the process, where they are, um, where, and where their grades are standing. So a syllabus, again, some of them don't read the syllabus when you need them to read the syllabus, the syllabus but they really are paying attention to their grade breakdown. Grades are not abstract. Um, Using rubrics is really important with them. So how many of you use rubrics? Okay. Did you always use rubrics? No. Okay, so what made you move on to using rubrics? Um, when I, <laughs> when, uh, exactly. When I started teaching here in 2008, I was teaching a student who wanted to know why she didn't get an A. And she said, well, where's the rubric for this? So I had to go look up what a rubric okay. was. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Absolutely. Our law school colleague here, 
they're little lawyers when it comes down to the grades. At the end of the day, they will look back through their contract with you, their syllabus, and say, well, you say here that it's five points or 5% for this item. I'd like to negotiate. I'd like to discuss what, where these points are. I'd like you to prove to me where these points came from. Now, how many, we can have a debate about this. How many of you think that students shouldn't question their grade? Okay. Okay. <laughs> it's, 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 ta it's taboo to say you're not, you're really, I'm sure, you're not the only person who's thinking that. Inside of our head, oh, yes, ma'am. Well, I'll just say that back to the law school moment, the rubric I use for two ways. One, to support their learning, but also to back up my Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. Exactly. Absolutely. At the end of the day, they want to know why they got this specific grade. And a rubric, like our, our, our um, colleague at the law school said, covers you. Mm -hmm. Because at the end of the day, they do have a right to question their grades that's in the student handbook. And at the end of the day, it just becomes a mess if you can't justify why you gave them their grade. Because to them, it's not abstract. Yes, ma'am? You know, we're from the dental school. Yes, ma'am. And I had, I had students before I even the grade. They wanted to know what mathematical equation. Absolutely. So I emailed everyone the mathematical equation as to how I was going to calculate, to calculate their grades. And then they got it. And then they were emailing me before I even calculated the grade. It looks like that I think I'm going to put this in your class. And it was back and forth. I know I missed this class and how much we did up with attendance. And I missed that quiz. And they were like going crazy with this. Mm -hmm. And after I calculated the grades, then I still got arguments. I said, you ended up with a C. How did you calculate that those? I said, this is how I did it. Remember, did you add this? Remember the point, this, that? And they finally said, oh, I see how you calculated. I said, you need to go back because you did the math wrong. I literally had to debate them and tell them you did the math wrong. The art of negotiation. I think most, most millennials feel entitled. I know you've heard this word feel entitled to question and negotiate. Yeah. It has a lot to do with who they are as, as, a, as a people. And as much as you want to be upset or you'd like to argue with them, sometimes it's better to get in front of them. At the end of the day, our profession is to teach and we have a new audience. So you emailing them the calculation, you're, you're ahead of the game. Then the, the math on the back end, if they mess up on the math, that's fine, but, that's, but, you, but you're covered. But you're covered, and they know up front, so it's not abstract to them. You have a clear understanding of what their grade is. You don't, you don't dislike me, or you didn't give them a grade. Did you hear that? You gave me. No, sir. No, ma'am. About coming to school, we have students who feel like they don't need to come to school. Oh, yeah. Because they, 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 the they medical students <laughs> don't have to go to school. They, they have the book. Oh, no. <laughs> they, they, they literally argue and say, she can say, they are arguing about the fact that they are supposed to come to class. Is they it part of the grade? They feel like if the medical so students don't have to come to class, 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 they don't have to come to class. Is it, is it a part of their grade? It's right. mandatory. And, and, and that's, and that's they sometimes, again, are in negotiation. They want to debate. They want to discuss if it is a rule, if, it, if it's tied to their grade. It's not abstract. And so you're covered. Again, so if you don't have it in writing, that's why your, your syllabus is so important. Yes, sir? So I think uh, you asked the question, you know, whether they should question their grade or not. Or they, right? I yes, think sir. it's not so much whether. For me, it becomes a thing of how. Absolutely. Right? And the, there's a fine line between respect uh, for yeah, the, absolutely. The, the stature or status of a, of a, of a faculty member and, a, and a, the idea that my energies are being drained in this back and forth. Like, Absolutely. Are you serious? Like, if I have to sit there with, and I think it is a function of parenting, because yes, from please. birth it's like you want to go, you need to go to the bathroom. I don't want to. And then the whole, <laughs> like, you to, I mean, we actually gave them a soundtrack for the bathroom. Absolutely. Right. And so now in the classroom there's no soundtrack, so right. they're worried. How are you going to manage it? But I think for me the question is just the draining. Is this a lot more time and energy 
spent away from the substantive issues of teaching, imparting knowledge, and then dealing with it. You know, and then they communicate with each other. Literally, as I'm talking to you, they will copy that email Absolutely. and text it to their friend. Everybody this is what he told me. Yeah. And before I know it, that person, and I, and I call them all up. I go, let's do group chat together. <laughs> <laughs> let's just get everyone together. And which, which is why it's important with them, going back to it, everything, nothing is abstract to them. Everything is concrete. So if you have a policy, you have got to stick to it. You put it in writing. You have a rubric. Don't veer away from it. Um, if you change a grade, oh boy. everybody knows about it. Yeah. It's not a secret. You're not, you never help just one person because then the next person, their friend, who even though you said, Tammy, don't say anything. This, this is, I'm, I'm helping you out. Tammy told Donald. And then, and then you run into this situation where you now have a um, reputation for being easily swayed or swayable. And so you're gonna get that. It comes with the territory, it comes with who they are as a people. Some, of, some disrespect, and again, this is not singular to Howard University students by any stretch of the imagination, it has more to do with their, their, their upbringing and their manners, and that's not, that's not a Howard student, that is an individual. But their, their ability or desire to negotiate things is a symptom of um, their generation. So number one is gonna be 